So let's just be honest here. There's something very enticing about a person that you can't actually have. While we all know what we should be doing, sometimes the idea of something unavailable seems really exciting. Maybe it's the fantasy you want or the element of taboo, something that's dangerous, but dangerous also in a way that ignites passion. People fall for unavailables all the time. We see it from tons of women in our community. Science also shows that it's not, also, not always the taboo that we find that's the most addictive. As an article from the Business Insider explains, sometimes we desire what we can't have because one, we're attracted to the social proof, right? We want what others want because it just feels valuable. Or two, we're addicted to the highs of chasing someone, the breadcrumbs they leave us. The problem is these intense want what you can't have relationships rarely work out. Why? Because it's the imagined relationship going on in your head that's very appealing. It's, it's usually not all what it really is in reality, right? So we fantasize about the perfection and then we're left disappointed with the flesh and blood. And it's that story, whether you're chasing a married man or a celebrity or a guy that doesn't want what you want or an emotionally unavailable guy or a best friend who friend zoned you or whatever, right? So we take the idea of unavailable as a challenge. And so we're inclined to chase it. And I'll bet deep down, you already know that you can't be with this impossible guy. There's no way it's going to work out. And, and a lot of women that I talked to have already accepted it. Still, the desire is there. The want is intense and, and we've all been there, but how do you detach and can you detach? The answer is yes, you absolutely can. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. My name is Matthew Coast and welcome to Commitment Connection. Here are five ways to detach from a man that you can't be with. Number one is you play your own therapist and determine the reason for the attraction. It's obviously not just compatibility because there's other fish in the sea, right? So what is it about this guy that actually tempts you? Why is the timing of this relationship important? Uh, you know, what was the precise moment when you realized that you had feelings for him? Like, what are you getting out of being with this guy? How does he make you feel significant, excited, centered, connected? And more importantly, how can you replace this, this experience with something else? If you just try to detach, it usually doesn't end up working out. And so you need to replace whatever you're getting with something else. You can get your needs met through other means if you figure out which needs are being met by him. So number two is objectively analyze the situation. Understand why your feelings developed is a very important step to detaching, right? So try taking an honest look at who he is and why he's not actually the fantasy man that you've built him up to be. Oftentimes in these unavailable crushes, people create like an idealized version of the real man that they want to fall in love with. So they love the fantasy, the idea, but later they end up finding out that the real guy is not anything like the fantasy was. And this can quickly cure somebody of all romantic notions that they've had. And, and you may have experienced this with guys before where they're like really hot at the beginning because they have this kind of idea about who you are that isn't actually you. And then all of a sudden they disappear at some point because they realize that their idea of who you were in their mind isn't actually who you are. But you don't have to wait until the the doomed re the relationship is doomed in order to realize what's going on. You can start looking now. Look at him objectively. Look over his life and hear what other people have to say about him. You know, is he really the man that you think he is beyond the physical intimacy? What actually do you guys have in common? All right. So number three is release all of that pent up frustration by letting out your emotions. So go ahead and confess your love, not to him, but confess your love, your grievance, your rage, everything, write a letter, record it, sing about it, whatever you need to do, 
The solution here is not to tell him because you already know what he's going to say. The same thing that he always says, if, if you're even actually connected to this guy in real life, because sometimes people will get connected to somebody and they're not even in communication with them. It's, it's happened with women with me before where they'll contact me and I'll have like an inbox full of messages from them. And I I'm not even responding to them. And it's like, we have a whole relationship in my, in my inbox. Right. And, and it's not even with me. It's just them talking kind of to themselves. So you're going to write this letter and then just rip up that letter or lock it away somewhere. So it won't ever be found, but you still may need to say it or hear it for yourself. So, uh, if you're, if you need to do that, you can always do that. Some people like to do kind of rituals with these kinds of things where they'll like light a fire and then burn it or, or whatever. Right. And, and let go, let go of it. Whatever you need to do to just let go is, is the important thing to do here. All right. Number four is detach slow, slowly, not cold Turkey. So one day at a time, try to focus on other things. So trying too hard to forget him all at once usually makes it really, really difficult. And a lot of people have a hard time doing that. Some people it works, right? So you have to figure out what works for you. You have to have a pretty strong kind of willpower in order to do this though. If you want to do it cold Turkey, instead just live one day at a time and gradually wean yourself off of his presence. Even if it's like really little steps, at a time. So stop checking messages every day. Stop writing him on weekends, progressively interact with him fewer times as days and weeks go on. And like we talked about earlier, replace your interactions with him by getting your needs met somewhere else. So what are these needs that, that you need to replace, right? Is it, is it feeling like you're special and important and significant? Is it some kind of excitement that you're having? Is it, is it this connection, this feeling of love, right? It's feeling like you're connected to somebody like what, what is the, is it, is it like the feeling of comfort? Like you have something figured out and you, you've got this thing, right? Figure out what those things are and start replacing them one by one, whatever they are, for you with this guy. So over times, over time, your feeling will start to stall and his lack of attention together with your distraction will soon end up curing you of kind of this connection that you have with them, right? So maybe you won't end up completely forgetting about him, but you'll eventually realize that you both have very different lives and that you've kind of created a separate identity from him, which is something we're going to be talking about here in just a second. So what works in theory won't work in the real world, right? It's time to get busy living your own life. And so we're moving on to number five, which is reboot your own life. Look beyond him. So it's time to look for a new beginning after the fact, after this guy, whether he's a crush or an ex or, or whatever it is that he is right. Focus on what you want to be and what you want to do with your life. Focus on building an identity in a life outside of him. So researchers have found that when you're with someone, your identity starts to mold together and you start to feel like you're one person. And then what happens in a breakup is it feels like you've actually lost a piece of yourself. And so the, one of the fastest ways to get over somebody is to start doing things that strengthen your identity, that strengthen who you are as a person and who you feel you are. So you start focusing on building it. So when you're with them, right, you're focusing on building a life together and you dream of what things could be like together. And so instead, what you want to do is start focusing on building your life separately from him and start dreaming of yourself independent of him and in a better relationship or by yourself or whatever, right? This will help you take back your identity as an individual and start feeling the separation that exists already exists between the two of you. And if you set your mind and heart to it, you can do absolutely anything. Yeah. Even a relationship you crave, but it's, it's impossible to great. You can, you can break free of that, right? In the end, you'll end up being proud of yourself for resisting a disastrous idea 
for sparing yourself the grief of a bad decision that that you are just getting deeper and deeper and deeper into and and you deserve better and you will find it you are worth more than staying with someone who isn't going to take care of you and your needs not to say that they're a bad person or anything but you deserve something more you deserve more than being an option. You deserve more than getting breadcrumbs. You deserve more than just being, uh, uh, not, not getting your needs taken care of and taking care of somebody else's needs. So remember that absolutely.